or SAN. What is NAS? NAS is network attached storage. So what happens is, why do we use network attached storage? When you're working on your local system, everything is on your laptop or your desk. Rena Mendonca. What happens if your laptop blows up? Your hard drive that which you are using does not function. Your computer does not work. All the data that you have on your system is gone forever. So to avoid that, corporations, organizations, enterprises provide something called SAN, called Storage Area Network, which is supported by NAS, Network Attached Storage. Is this cloud computing? No, no, no. Well, that's a different concept altogether. So what happens is, when you're looking at a network attached storage, you have a shared repository which will serve as a storage medium for you. So everyone will have access to that storage medium, of course, depending on the roles and rights Has that you have. The conference. And you can store your information on that particular storage area, thereby, even if your system breaks down, the data, which is the most important part, is not lost. So what we've done here, we've created a network attached storage which is residing on a server. Does everyone know what a server is? Mm -hmm. All right. So, Prezel, please help us understand what do you think a server is? What does a server do? Server is uh, where you can put a, a store, where you can store all the information and you can use it anytime you want by the login. Okay, uh, now we are moving into the thick of our training program on concepts. And I need one volunteer who can take down the homework questions and broadcast it to the group. Because as we move along, there will be a lot of interactive questions that we will work on. So any volunteer, Faisal, you, or Praveena, or anyone in the class, I want one volunteer who will take down, who will take down the questions and send it out to the group. And I, I don't want you to write it in book. Okay. Write it on the computer itself right. so that you don't have to transport it back into the system. So my first question is, what is a server? And Faisal said that server is where you can do what? Store. All Store, the okay. So Faisal says server is a You can store all the information. Server is a unit where you can store all the information? Does everyone agree with that? It's a storage Yes. It's a database So it's a repository where you can store and extract. Right? Okay. Anyone else? Hello, everyone. I want everyone to be participative. What do you think is a server? Uh, multiple people can access it. Okay. So it's again a refined form of what Faisal and Praveena said. Anyone else? Whenever you answer anything, please make sure that you, na you say your name first. Because we are still not familiar or tuned to the voice to recognize who that person is. So I would appreciate Sorry, if you could say your name first and then give your answer. Sorry, Ashish. Yeah, go ahead. Who is that? So, Praveena, you were saying something. Server is a place where the data is stored in a data table, not in general. Like, we okay. have data modeling and then the data is stored in it. And so, what you were talking about, what you were talking about in specific is database server. Mm -hmm. So, the database server has what you just mentioned. Okay. There are, there's a data model based on which you create a repository, which is tables, columns, and rows. Mm -hmm. In that, the data is stored. But that's database server. Okay. Right? What Faisal was talking about as storage and retrieval, it can be a database, but can it also be a file server? Yes. yes. Okay. So you're storing files and retrieving files. So now what we are looking at is a server can do multiple functions. Right? So what we need to understand, what is a server? That's your question that you have, right? Okay. Yes. okay. The next thing that I want you to know is server is a piece of equipment and software together which has higher configuration. It has more beefier configuration. You will have more number of processing capabilities in that system. Processing capability will come with more CPU, more processing power, more RAM. Right? You have different chipset. 
like you may have heard pentium pentium 2 3 4 intel pentium etc etc there are so many other hardware chip sets that are available then you have ram 2 gb ram 3 gb ram 4 gb ram 60 gb ram 256 gb ram these are all configurations of a system on which you have server that is running so a server is hosted on a higher configuration machine and server is basically in the business of serving it can serve data database server it can serve file file server it can serve printing options have you heard about print server have you heard about chat server when you chat with someone when you go on to facebook and you see a chat window where chat is going on with a lot of people at the same time so that's your chat server so based on the function in which the software specializes that becomes that type of server so you have chat server print server telephone server telephony servers have you heard about web servers yeah so what do the web servers do they serve web pages they serve web pages right so similarly our list of questions include what is a server what are the various types of servers and what are the companies that make those servers right so this will give us a broad spectrum of one part of the technology that we should be aware of it is based on the types of servers that are there in your application you need to do different type of testing so we started with a network attached storage which is sitting on a file server so let's go on to the network attached storage and follow the instruction that i am doing here so what you want to do is you want to go to this share which you can do from here or you can use the explorer that comes up here you can use either of these options to use the windows explorer what you need to do is write sanduk what is sanduk mean it's a box because we have called our storage by a name which gives you another concept that the name of the storage medium can be defined so we have given it a very indian name sanduk is a storage repository it's like a trunk so in that sanduk we have something called apple files that make it up training so what you're looking at do you notice any difference between flashes before sanduk and after sanduk there are two flashes before sanduk and one flash after sanduk so when you have two flashes and you write a network path what i'm doing now is writing a network path to access two flashes before a name for a repository tell me that that's the server in that server there is a folder called training under that folder training there is another folder called qa in which there are batches if i hit enter now i will go to the repository which shows me the path which we have followed so this is sanduk training in that sanduk training in qa now i'm going on to the batches so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to create a repository uh everyone is not making this repository i'm just making this repository for batch 70 can everyone access this batch 70 share that i have created can you please check so you can now access the batch 70 repository so what we are going to do here now is we are going to create our own individual repository in batch 70 in which we will store all the content that we work with the idea is that you can switch machines whenever you want but access the same repository which is on the network attached storage and still be able to do it what do you want to do with the data now this is dependent on how your network is configured you could have this network attached storage locally in the office where you're sitting or it could be at some remote location now to give you the example for people who are remote at different locations within the continental us 
will also be able to access it. I would be working on some repository that is residing thousands of miles away from me and it will be seamless for me. But why do we do that? The idea is that when we go on to the network attached storage, that network attached storage is backed up on a regular basis. So what will happen by the backup? If there is a problem, you have another copy of that from which you can retrieve. What it says when you have everything locally and your system blows up, you have nothing to fall back on. So this is a very important concept in IT for network attached storage. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a sample folder and I want you to copy that folder and name it for yourself. So I'm just creating a folder here which is sample. Do not do anything yet. In this sample folder, we will have separate folders that we will create for our training purpose. The first one that we will make is QC in which we will store information about whatever we want for quality center. Oops, sorry. Next folder that I'm going to build here is a folder for QTP which is Quick Test Professional. Then I'm making another folder for Load Runner. That's another tool that we cover in the training program. Then I'm going to create another one which is for General Documents. Right? In this you can store all the homework that you do. Alright? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a copy of this for and create a name for this folder so that I can use it. So I am going to use this name for my repository and I encourage you to make similar repository for yourself as well. So please go ahead and create a folder by keeping a copy of what you see in sample and bring it up to speed. Alright? So I see someone started already. So let's look at that. Please make sure that you make it in your name. You did that? Okay, all right. Anyone else, please, go ahead. Hello, Ashish. Uh, yes, who's this? Diana. Yes, Diana. Um, I, I don't think I can create it right now because... Uh, um, Amol uh, didn't give me the, uh, you know, the, the, he didn't uh, create the virtual machine for me. Okay, so let me do it for you. I will just make one for you. Okay, thank you. 